thank you, Minister Tofton, and thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade continues to work closely with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and its agencies, including in particular the National Health Fund, uh, on what is clearly one of the key focuses of the government at this point in time, the procurement of safe and tested vaccines. Um, I wish to share that notwithstanding the fact that the very nature of these discussions don't lend themselves to public discussion, because that is the nature of diplomacy, that our outreach has been extensive and intensive. Um, it has been at the bilateral level, it has been facilitating with uh, multilateral organizations through regional organizations and through private entities, unusually so. Um, unfortunately, our silence, I think, on some of these matters has led to not only legitimate questions, uh, but also opportunistic arguments. And um, that has been unfortunate. The Prime Minister has spoken to that. But I do believe that there are just one or two points that I could share to help contextualize the, um, the process through which we have been going. Uh, I've heard it said that, you know, Jamaica has been late in our approaches, etc. And, and this is absolutely not so. I will share one counterpart who, uh, in our discussions about where, where would, were good paths for us to approach in respect of um, vaccine procurement, uh, he shared that his government had in fact paid for 10 million doses from October 2020, paid for, and uh, they still had not received the very first one. The global landscape in terms of secure uh, of, of supply chains and manufacturing processes has been extremely fluid and full of uncertainty and, uh, um, and, uh, and dynamism. And therefore, it, it is, I share that as an example to contextualize the type of uncertainty that governments the world over, regardless of size and financial uh, uh, resources, have been uh, um, encountering across the space. I also want to just address a point that I think entered the public discourse last week, indicating that uh, Jamaica had somehow said no to uh, our friends and partners from the government and Republic of, of the Republic of India in respect of vaccines. And that is why we are receiving them now, while others may have received them before. And I want to, again, debunk that. Uh, the letter of offer which we received was dated December 31st, which of course was Thursday, the last uh, working day of the year. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade consulted with the Ministry of Health on the 4th, which was the fourth, first working day of the year, Monday, and responded on Tuesday, indicating our willingness and our gratitude to receive uh, a gift uh, in respect of uh, in order rather to vaccinate our frontline workers and that we looked forward to discussing the arrangements that could be made as soon as um, to ensure that they could be made available when approved for domestic use in Jamaica. And uh, therefore, I hope that that will put to bed uh, the type of discussion, unhelpful discussion, which has been taking place. Uh, we wish also, I wish to add my own. Greetings, people. Greetings, people. This, uh, this is an old clip of one of the ministers of foreign affairs. Foreign men, alien to our people. But these people, this lady right here, I guess she is representing us as a people to do business on the international level. Hence, it's called Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where they engage in commerce and call it trade, and use that word interchangeably, so then can put restrictions on the common folk who only trade with each other and have nothing to do with commerce but in order to issue licenses to these people to tell them they are engaged in commerce. Now, 
I would like some of our bright people on this island and by extension in the diaspora, on the mainland, all over. If they could oblige our common people by doing a research on this lady right here. Who is she? Where is she from? What school did she attend? Where did she went to college? What kind of degrees she have? And what's her letter of intent? Who is her allegiance to? What kind of travel document she carry? Is it a Jamaica passport? Is it a British passport? Is it a United States of America passport? Or is it one of those Chinese Russian passports? For honorable verification and clarification, I would love to ascertain this information about this specific public servant. <laughs> I'm just curious, only because I've seen this face before, but Johnson wasn't at the last end of the name. It wasn't Johnson at that time. And I saw her in a meeting representing the Awaks here, saying she and her colleagues were Jamaican indigenous peoples. This very lady right here. I might be mistaken. I might be mistaken. Hence, I'm asking for help for someone to ascertain this lady's professional record, it should be public record. It shouldn't be anything that's illegal or unlawful. Because the moment these people are coming in front, the media, saying they are representing the people of this land, then we need to know who they are. What's their point of origin? And what's their volition and intent? Basic questions. Just to satisfy the people's curiosity. And as we move along, we'll just continue to share whatever information we can ascertain and then we can break down some of these tape because she's saying a whole bunch of things. But what I think people is missing is that we have no idea who and what this lady is, who and what she represents, and when she speaks, on whom or whose behalf does she speak? Does she speak for the government of Jamaica? Well, now we know the government of Jamaica is foreign to the people. Does she speak for the people of Jamaica? I'm not sure. This is why we're asking these questions. Looking at this lady, and she appears to be a woman. However, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Hence, we ask questions. <laughs> the Office of the Ministers of Foreign Affairs. We need an independent forensic audit the activities of that office also it's just for we the people we are not being rude we are not being disrespectful we are not being disruptive we are just curious and this lady play a very important role in their fears.
of this nation state. Very vital role. I think she's like a go-between. I think she's like a bridge. Like one of them link there, you know, them power female there. We have contacts everywhere. Yeah, so I think she's the international spokesperson with a little bit more power than just a speaker. So that is just my opinion. So people of the island of Jamaica, it's okay to start asking questions, running basic inf you know, say investigation on these people who are representing us. And for the people them, who have money and can afford these things, especially some of you so-called criminals, Then even put away one of even a hundred thousand dollar man. A hundred thousand dollar. When you go buy a little machine, just put away a hundred thousand dollar and invest it in a, some foreign private investigator, you know, for come on the island, come to somewhere. I want to investigate on a public servant, say how them I live, where them I live, why them even I live. The people them were proper would just give them thumbs up and support them. So we can bring a positive change. And the people them were improper. Thumbs down, we boot them out. No problem. So we can, you know, effect a positive change. So this is my only question to this female right here. Who are you, madam? Not just your name. I would like to see a letter of intent. People you need to research the Jamaica letter of intent. Which one was it? To the IMF? I'll give it a specific. <laughs> wow. I don't know these people, man. I'm so behind time. I have no idea who these people is. One minute I saw this lady in a thing, 2013. In one of those UN meeting, talking about being indigenous. And now she's a minister of foreign affairs. Right. People, if all of you knew what is going on. I'm quite sure somebody would tell me so I can just sit still. Anyway, that's just my curiosity. Gratitude for the moment, gratitude for the time. And my ministry's own personal thanks to the government and people of the Republic of India in respect of the donation which they have advised should arrive this week. And to remind the Jamaican public are you saying that India, as a foreign nation to us, does willingly, willingly give up vaccination to our people freely? Or India, as a nation, never just send the money directly to us so the people can have it in their pocket and then choose to eat properly and you know, when they must social distance, they more have no problem. It's kind of strange. When all these strangers are half our gift, what we don't need. Are half our gift where other people are say may be bad for us. It's just questions. Why would India offer with anything at all? And then why am I offer with his vaccine? And they must have vaccine here free so you can vaccinate your frontline people for free. Who are the frontline people? It's our mom and our dads. It's our sisters and our brothers. This is how they start this mess and here it is. <laughs> and it is a conspiracy against our fundamental rights and freedoms. 
uh, when they were engaging at a meeting for make these kind of decisions, I wasn't there. So why should any decision that these foreign people make affect I as man when I wasn't there? I wasn't involved. I wasn't given full disclosure. So how could it apply to I? I, I cannot consent to anything like that. So with all due respect, madam, as beautiful as you may seem, I would like a profile in my office, a forensic profile. Professionally, I have no interest in a private activity, absolutely none. Totally respect your private activities. But on the public side, we have to go get a dossier on you, madam. So for some reason, you just seem much more important I know you really carry on conduct yourself out here. Yeah, man, you seem much more influential than what you're letting on. We need to know who you are, madam. Where did you grow? Did you grow here on the island? And in what location? I'm quite sure it's not Rima. How would I recognize you? Uh, that means say that I forgot school in my time. Yeah, man. Uh, as beautiful as you may seem. I know you may I the same age, bro. <laughs> However, I forgot to run some. Basic search on you. So we can compile a profile on you, just like on a like for profile all a man like me. So gratitude for your time, madam. Gratitude for being patient with us. And we'll hope to see you soon, madam. After we do a little bit of research, making sure that our presumption and assumption is correct before we make any kind of claim. But I'll tell you this, one of the very first question will be presented to you is, where do we you pledge your allegiance? What government, what country? The next question would be, what is your point of origin? Where was your mom originate? Where was your dad originate? What location on the island? And what time period? You are our public servant, are you not? And if you are my public servant, then naturally I am your master. And there is no where in nature I've seen it where the servant is above its master. So as my public servant, With all due respect, we need a public dossier on you. Uh, we don't know much about you guys. That's it. 